words of our divine mother from the book the mother question and answer is 5758 volume 9 page 423 topic remaining silent our divine mother says from the point of view of individual development and for those who are still at the beginning of the path to know how to remain silent before what one does not understand is one of the things which would help most in the progress to know how to remain silent not only externally without uttering a word but also to know how to be silent within so that the mind does not assert its ignorance with its usual presumptuousness does not try to understand with an instrument that it is incapable of understanding that it may know its own weakness and open simply quietly waiting until the time has come for it to receive the light because only the light the true light can give it understanding it is not at all that it has learned nor all that it has observed nor all its so called experience of life it is something else which is completely beyond it and until this something else which is the expression of the grace manifests within it if very quietly very modestly the mind remains silent and does not try to understand and above all to judge things would go much faster the noise made by all the words all the ideas in your head is so deafening it that it prevents you from hearing the truth when it wants to manifest to be quiet that is to learn to be quiet and silent when you have a problem to solve instead of turning over in your head all the possibilities all the consequences all the possible things one should do or one should not do if you remain quiet with an aspiration for a good will from the divine if possible a need for good will the solution comes very quickly and as you are silent you are able to hear it when you are caught in a difficulty try this method instead of being agitated turning over all the ideas and actively seeking solutions of worrying fretting running here and there inside your head i don't mean externally for externally probably you have enough common sense not to do that but inside in your head remain silent and quiet and according to your nature with ardor or peace with intensity or widening or with all these together implore the light the light of the divine and wait for it to come in this way the path would be considered considerably shortened november 12 1958 page 4 26 question sweet mother how can one find the right st- stage and the turn of one's development for this our divine mother says how can you find it you must look for it you must want it persistently it is the most important thing for you what happens most often when one makes the inner effort that's needed to discover one's soul to unite with it and allow it to govern one's life is a kind of marvelous enchantment with this discovery as a result of which the first instinct is to tell oneself now i have what i need i have found infinite delight and no longer to be concern- concerned with anything else in fact this is what has happened to almost all those who have made this discovery and some of them have even set up this experience as a principle of realization and said when you have done that everything is done everything is there is nothing more no more to do and you have reached the goal and the end of the road indeed a great courage is necessary to go further the soul one discovers must not be must be an interpret warrior soul which does not at all rest satisfied with its own inner joy while comforting itself for the unhappiness of others with the idea that sooner or later everybody will reach that state and that is good for others to make the same effort that one has made or at best that from the state of inner wisdom one can with great benevolence and deep compassion help others to reach it and that when everybody has attained it well that will be the end of the world and that's so much better for those who don't like suffering but there is a but 
Are you sure that this was the aim and intention of the Supreme when he manifested? There is a brief silence then the Divine Mother says, The whole creation, the whole universal manifestation appears at best like a very bad joke if it only comes to this. Why begin at all if it is only to get out of it? What is the use of having struggled so much, suffered so much, of having been created, struggled so much, which at least in its external appearance, it is so tragic and dramatic if it is simply to teach you how to get out of you, it would have been better not to begin at all. But if one goes to the very depth of things, if stripped not only of the egoism but also of the ego, one gives oneself totally without reserve, so completely and disinterestedly that one becomes capable of understanding the plan of the Lord, then one knows that it is not a bad joke, not a torturous path by which you return. A little better to the starting point, on the contrary, is to teach the entire creation the delight of the being, the beauty of the being, the greatness of the being and the majesty of a sublime life and the perpetual growth, perpetually progressive of that delight, that beauty, that greatness. Then everything has a meaning. Then one no longer regrets having been struggled, suffered. One only has the enthusiasm to realize the divine goal and one plunges headlong into the realization with the certitude of the goal and victory. But to know that one must stop being egoistic, being a separate person turned in on oneself and cut off the supreme origin, that is what must be done to cast off one's ego then one can know the true goal and this is the only way to cast off one's ego to let it fall off like a useless garment the result is worth the efforts that must be made and then one is not at all alone on the way one is helped if one has the trust if you have had a second's contact with the grace, that marvellous grace which carries you along, speeds you on the path, even makes you forget that you have to hurry, if you have had that, uh, only a second's contact with that, then you can strive not to forget. And with the candor of a child, the simplicity of a child, for whom there is there are no complications, give yourself totally to the grace and let it do everything for you. What is necessary, says our Divine Mother, what is necessary for you is not to listen to what resists, not to believe what contradicts, to have a trust, a real trust, a confidence which makes you give yourself fully without calculating, without bargaining. Trust, trust, trust. The trust that says, do this, do this for me, I leave it to you. This is the best way, this is the only way. These are the divine words of our Divine Mother which will help us to get out of all the difficulties around and just go as per the divine swell ma Oh, I'm